Where would you choose to be in a heatwave if your home had wheels? Well, we've chosen to be right alongside the River Esk, under the shadow of a great oak tree. Ooh. Yes, this is our first trip away in Abbey, our new caravan and the new addition to the channel. And we're thoroughly enjoying it. And we've got the chance to share with you our adventures in this part of the world, as we discover what there is to find in the land of the castles. Now we're in the town of Monmouth, significant town in this part of Wales. The car park is just behind Caroline and the river is just behind me. So I think we ought to just take a little look on the river before we look at the beautiful town itself. Monmouth Gate which has a gorgeous bridge and look at this I'll take you over to have a look we got some swans and this cygnets still grey and fluffy Oh dear, Daddy Swan is not happy. I think I'm going to walk up here. He's either wanting food or he wants to eat me. So I'm going for a walk right away from the river's edge. Bit is busy picking a few bits and pieces up. There's not a lot to see here, but there is enough to make it worth a little look at the ground. Keeping one eye on Mr. Swan behind me. Oh, just a bit of pot. A little bit of willow pattern. What have you found, Mr. Johnson? A couple of bits. A little oh, bit of right. yeah, pottery a bit there, of well worn. A little bit of it patterned. Oh, a little bit of blue, yep. Yeah. And that's quite a nice piece of green glass. It seems to have a little bit of. I don't oh. know if that's. I like the colour on that. It's not the deep green, it's like a pale green. Very nice. Two bits and pieces. I think sort of to write home about, but um, worth a little look. Another little find, not spectacular, mm. but if you hold it up to the light, I love the sort of effect it's had on the glass. It's almost like a, 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 a crazed effect, mm. and it breaks up the light as it comes through. There's also something in the glass. I thought maybe that was looks like a bit of leaf, but it's not. It's actually in the glass, so that yeah. would have been a really pretty glass. Well, I've washed that in the water, mm. and I can't get that off. Oh, that's very nice. It is, and of course, it's nice to be finding a few bits and pieces on this river, because as I mentioned, there are several rivers in the area. We've got the Usk, we've got the Wye, and we've got the Mono, and it's the Mono that um, actually gives its name to Monmouth, uh, which is the town, and of course, later became the county of Monmouthshire. So it's lovely to be on this river, 
even if we have got to watch out for that rather protective daddy swan. He doesn't like me at all. No, but fair play, he's doing what he's here to do, which is making sure mum and the little ends are safe. But it is nice to find pretty things here on the river, just beneath a bridge that has stood there for well over 700 years. The castles around this part of Wales that we're staying in are prolific and they played such an important part in the strategy of William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror, 1066, Battles of Hastings, defeats the King of England. You think the story's over? It was far from over. It was a whole country to take and Wales was not going to give in easily. So the castles were an important part of putting their mark on the land of Wales. And when it comes to Wales and this part of Wales, there's another William that played a significant role. Not William the First, William the Conqueror, but one of his right hand men, one of his key supporters. And his name was William Fitz Osborne. And William the Conqueror appointed William Fitz Osborne as the Earl of Herefordshire. And he had such an impact in these parts. He built significant castles, one at Chepstow. And if you want to see that, we've got a previous video of it. And this, or at least here, what remains of the castle at Monmouth. And Monmouth was an important strategic location. It's all about rivers down here, the borders, the shipment of stuff and everything else. And you have the Wye and the Mono that come together and the crossings are in this place. In fact, there's a significant building here in Monmouth that is unprecedented in the rest of the UK because they have the one and only medieval bridge. And not only a medieval bridge, but a fortified medieval bridge with a gate in the center of the span. And that has stood the test of time for over 700 years and is a landmark of Monmouth today. But in its day, it was all about control, strategy. It was all about keeping the people suppressed, keeping the power of the king prolific throughout the land and if you're wondering what that tapping is there's a flag up there and that little piece at the top keeps hitting against the flagpole and he's driving me bonkers In fact, long after the issues of who was in control had finished, back in the 1800s, a commercial benefit came from the bridge because the market here was phenomenal. They used to come from all over the UK to the livestock market that was held in Monmouth. And as they would drive their animals through the bridge, they put a toll on it just to make a little bit of extra from the farmers, as well as Chepstow. That significant castle there, and this that was a mighty fortress at Monmouth at one time. William Fitzosborne drove into this area and built castles along the rivers. And perhaps one of the most significant events that took place here at this castle in those years when it was such a grand establishment was the birth of a baby. Because here in 1387 a baby was born while dad was off hunting in the forest of Dean baby came into the world who in his 20s would assume the role of King of England born here in Monmouth technically a Welsh birth that was Henry V who would reign and conquer and establish the control of the monarchy throughout the kingdom and now still peering through the trees high above the river you can
could see the ruins of the tower and just imagine how grand that castle stood and now this water here provided all that it needed including defense from the one side that was part of the strategy of the designs created by William Fitzosborne as he built castles all along this part of Wales and as well as building here in Monmouth and as we mentioned over in Chepstow he built other castles in this area as he drove into the Monmouthshire area and took possession of the land for his king and one of those castles was at Grosmont And here we are at Grossmont Castle, one of three castles built in this locality in order to impose the Norman will on the Welsh people. Can you imagine just how peculiar it must have been and the contrast between the French-speaking Normans that occupied the high ground and the fortified building to those who lived all around this locality? all Welsh folk. Of course, with such a contrast, there was bound to be uprising. There was bound to be rebellion. And that's really the greatest contribution to the development of these castles. If it hadn't been for the unruly Welsh and their complete lack of willingness to submit to the idea of being conquered, then the castles would have remained a small affair because originally they were wooden forts built on a hill. But the more the Welsh rebelled, the greater the castles strengthened their resources and built up to what we now see the ruins of today, which was a grand stone affair. And it was during the first 20 years or so of the 13th century that the then owner of this Castle Hubert de Burg created the stone edifice. And as we visit today and climb the ramparts, you begin to understand just why the residents of this fortress put so much confidence in the building that they created. It was a structure that stood high upon the hilltop and would have imposed a sense of domination all around. But as effective as it was, it didn't prevent the Welsh for the next 200 years trying to establish their right to freedom. And in 1405, in a rebellion that was led by Owen Glyndwr, one of the great princes of Wales, there was a battle year and it was fierce and they needed support in order to repel those attacking forces of the Welsh. And for a time, the garrison of the castle made their escape to Usk, where they took refuge in another castle, till the moment came when they were able to overcome the Welsh forces and establish their control once more on the land of Wales. Routed by the fierce attack of the Welsh rebels, here in Esk was where refuge was taken. The castle is just down below us, currently in private hands, has been for some time, and undergone a series of development and beautification since the 1930s, and is open occasionally, and there's a chargeable donation to go in and see it. But where we stand, this idyllic spot, 
with this glorious scene behind me. It was down from above that the Welsh continued their march and they met here at the Battle of Puchmelin in 1405. But it was here that the Welsh were routed by the English and the English had their first significant win in the war for the control of Wales. If trees could talk, they'd have a tale to tell. Lord Grey of Condor leading the English troops did the task he was charged with and routed the Welsh rebels. But the story has a very sad and bitter twist because when the battle was over and the English were victorious, they took 300 of the Welsh rebels prisoner. But rather than holding them or putting them in prison, they took them down to the castle and there outside the castle they massacred all 300 as a message to the Welsh that any form of rebellion was not going to be tolerated. Then in 1431 the castle became the possession of William Ap Thomas and it was his son who inherited it after him, William Henry, who did the works of making the castle now not needed so much for fighting off the rebels into a residence more palatial and to his tastes as he now held the title of the 18th Earl of Pembroke. After his demise, no one took up residence. It began to fall into disrepair. And as is so often the case, the stones began to disappear as the local population took away the stonework of the conqueror's castle and used it for other purposes to build their homes and premises down in the village of Usk. Enough of castles for now, we'd better get on and see what else there is to find. Behind me is the River Usk and we're on the footpath that goes alongside it, but we can see a really big island up there only there's a gate to the right hand side which makes it private land to get access but fortunately as the river flows down there's a beach on that side so I think it's worth popping over and checking out that beach there may be nothing there but we won't know unless we look so here we are across the river Came over that beautiful ancient bridge and now down to the river edge and hopefully we can get access to that island and see if there's anything to be found there. Come on let's have a look. Right there seems to be a little pathway here that hopefully will just take us past the deep waters. Yep I think we're going to be okay and we can step out through here. There we go. Hold tight folks. Duck under the branches. There we are. Well, it's definitely a beach. And as we can see from the other side, it goes for a fair way. Down towards the bridge. Alright, I'm going to take a careful look. And if I find anything amongst the stones, I'll switch it back on and share it with you. Well, one thing's for sure, there's no denying the beauty of this place. Absolutely fantastic. And I've even been provided with a seat here on the beach, courtesy of the high tide that brought down this rather large log. So far, only modern items, most of which I think have been left behind by bathers as I see socks and flip-flops along the way. But nothing in the line that we usually look for. But we've still got a fair way to go, so I'll carry on walking and see if there's anything else to be found. It's lovely as the seeds blow by. It almost looks like snow coming down. Now Caroline is usually quite excited to find hobnailed boots. Well, I don't think that's hobnailed. It's not a boot. But somebody is missing a trainer. 
Well, although there seems to be nothing worth collecting on this beach, I think it's worth the extra 50 yards just to go and take a closer look at that lovely ancient bridge. Well, if you're looking for a pair of trainers, folks, this could be the place to come. Because I spotted that one in the corner there, but then back behind it is its buddy. Makes you wonder how somebody comes down, has a paddle, and then goes home forgetting to put their shoes back on. But as they say, it takes all sorts to make a world. If you don't like ducks, look away now. Well, that was lovely down there on the River Esk. A gorgeous bridge and the lovely view and the shade. Can't really complain when there's not enough rubbish in the river, but there was nothing there that we could find, not on that beach anyway. So we're back on the mono and we've already had one or two little finds here but we're encouraged to keep looking and to check a little further because of a message we received actually during lockdown back last year from one of our viewers David who has shared some information with us in the past that's been really helpful to us as a channel and told us about this spot because David told how he came here over the bridge saw just a little of this island exposed, came down and found some very interesting things. In fact, the first picture he sent us to the actual bridge in the background, holding the pieces on his hand. But then on his second trip, he found a cracking find, a beautiful pipe, probably from the 1700s. So, encouraged by David's success and by the few finds we've already had, we're going to continue to search here now on the River Mono. And we've got to be quick because if we look down there, look who's come in. Kill a swan. It's the evil that. swan. I'm out of here. Quick, let's go that way. <laughs> Run! Under normal circumstances, these would be letting any runoff of water flow all the way down to the river. But as you can see, it is dry as a bone. But we have seen a little island, so we're going to go down and see if we can get across. What's your verdict, Phil? I think we can. Right. I don't think we can get back, but I think we can get... <laughs> There's fishes in you. Ooh. Got a baby fish. Oh, I hope it's picking it up. They're only little tiny ones, but they fish. Well, I got my off-roaders on. And it doesn't matter if they get wet, so I'm going to try getting across. I'm going to jump. Oh, go on then. <laughs> You've got longer legs than me. I'm going to have to step in. I'm going to put a stone in there. Go on then. Build me a drawbridge. Still don't know if I can get that far, we'll give it a try. If you hear the splosh, you know I didn't make it. In your hand. Hey. hey! Well, it's only a little island. But it's definitely worth having a little look. See what sort of thing we got here. Obviously lots of stones. Lots of algae. But is there anything? that we're interested in. Now that looks unnatural, <laughs> not in sort of supernatural way, but yep, that's a little piece of old glass, I think. I can't see through it, but it is very dirty too. Let's try washing it. No, I still can't see through it. So it's a very dark piece of glass, and I say that's been in the river for a while. Oh, there's a piece of oh, ceramics. I don't think it's that old. Well, maybe. There. And uh, what's this shoe? Oh, I think that's just off. Oh, I think it's a shell. Oh, do you think that's a bit of pipe stem? So let's play. Is that pipe stem or twig? 
No, it's a twig. Can you spot anything in the water? Don't forget, shout if you see something. I can't see anything myself, but that doesn't mean there's nothing there. Oh, there's a piece of glass. A jar. Probably a screw top, but not a very deep screw on there, is there? Hmm. What's this? Oh, there's another piece of stoneware. So there are some little bits and pieces to be finding around here, and lots of algae and green pondweed. A bit of old brick. They got a little bit of terracotta, very nicely worn. Mm -hmm. Seems to have a bit, bit of age to it rather than the garden centre, I think. Yeah, I would say so, yes. Yeah. Uh, a bit of glass. Right. Ooh, Some Welsh slate. Slate. Oh, I always like finding a bit of Welsh slate. At first, I thought just another piece of terracotta. Then I noticed how thin it was. Yes. And the textured finish on it there. Oh, and look, it's, it's sort of curved. So, oh, that's nice. Then it's glazed well. inside as well. And I noticed something as you walked towards me, right by your foot. Right by to my your left. Foot. To my left. Is there a bit of a neck of a bottle, is there? Or a jar? Mm, wait. There. Oh, there. Oh, yes. A bit of glass something anyway. Don't know if it's the neck of a bottle or a jar. I've come under this willow here. So let's have a look. There's a piece of oh, some sort of stoneware there. Let's have a look what else is here. A mm, piece of terracotta. And another piece of stoneware jar. Lots of little tiny pieces. Not finding anything substantial and not much glass. Oh, another piece of a terracotta pot. Want to see what I found? Oh yes please, what have you got? Now this I thought was a piece of terracotta and then I started rubbing it. Right. Because it was all covered in gunk. And mm. <gasps> look, look at, at that. that. Look how bright that came out. Oh that's lovely. It's all covered in gunk and stuff and I just rubbed it in the water. Look, see it was all like that. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's a really nice find, actually. Look at that. That's a lovely colour, isn't it? Very nice. Oh, well spotted, Mr. Johnson. Go to the top of the glass. Oh, look. It's a piece of blue and white. And I can just see another piece of something up here. I'm getting very wet feet now. Keep your cool. Oh, another piece of stoneware. Lots of little bits of stoneware. And, oh, that's very rounded there, isn't it? What do you think that is? A stone? Oh, yes. Whoa, look at all those fish. But they're not only fish, I can see bits of china. So let's have a look what we've got. And there it is. Some blue and white there. Oh, that's pretty on both sides. And then we got this piece of stoneware. More stoneware. What's this? More plain stoneware. What about this? Right, that's the end of the scissors. <laughs> that's not very well, is it? And we've got something else here. Oh, that's pretty too. Blue and white. Oh, plain stoneware. Bit of blue. What's this here? This looks quite modern. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, wow, I thought that was just a piece of pipe. It's actually ceramic. Oh, that's lovely. It was a plate type thing with a hole like that in for some reason. Oh, I like that. What have you got, Mr. Johnson? Just a fragment. A fragment? Recognisable from probably a sore spot. I would say so, yes. So there's stuff washing down from somewhere. There yeah. was obviously a Monmouth dump at some mm. stage along the way that was running probably between 60 and 100 years ago and bits are washing to you but uh, where the source is I'm not sure but lots of bits and pieces and you know I had begun to think that David had picked up all the pretty bits but we've had one or two so we'll keep looking found a little, little bit I can paddle in and I think there's something in there there's this first which is uh, a bone you throw that away I don't like bones we got some china there's bit of plate. Oh, there's a little pile here. 
and a shell. Top off a stoneware jar. Edge of a plate. It's a ridged pottery. What is a muddler without finding ridged pottery? Hooray! And some plain. Oh, is that a pattern? No, it's just dirt. More stoneware. Ooh, it's like a little treasure trove here. Plain. That's plain. Plain. Wow, what a lovely little pile. More. This is the rim of something. Bit of blue and white. Whoops. That one's still alive. Something blue here. More plain. A little bit of blue on there. I think that's plain. A bit of blue. And some more stoneware. Ooh. No, oh, I thought that was bigger. It's not. Bottom off something. A copper ring. The rim of a glass jar. And I think that's about it. Oh no, that's blue and white. That's pretty. Just to your left. Huh? To my left. Is that a piece of pipe bowl? Where? Oh, there! Oh, what think it is! Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It's a piece of pipe bowl. Oh, I'm so excited. I really never thought we'd find anything that interesting today. I thought we'd just go to China. Oh, well spotted, Mr. Johnson. I think... Hmm? I think that we probably hit on something that David found. We're right at the edge again, and it's caused a bit of a pool in. Mm. And he picked up those bits and pieces, and we seem to have found a little pile here. He had some nice bits of... I think slipwear amongst these yes, as I'd well, which is lovely. But um, I came over to this side just because I spotted these two bits in the in the water. One of them is plain, and the other one has got a lovely bold oh, yes. blue pattern on. They were just in the water here, right? And as I look back, mesmerised by all your finds, <laughs> you saw I saw that lying up that way, Whoa. and just saw the edge. Oh, that's excellent! Oh, I'm really pleased now. Well done, Mr. Johnson. Look at the pattern on it. Is I know. That, is it a claw? It probably was something really interesting. Maybe we can find the rest. We'll keep looking. You can't see, but I've got a cam uh, spider on my camera. Oops. <laughs> oh, he's gone now. I've spotted something over there that looks really blue and unnatural. Doesn't look like it belongs in the river. Let's have a look. Look this creature on it. Get off. Oh, look at that. I think it's glass and it's got a dark blue on the outs inside and this lighter blue on the outside. Oh, that's very nice. I'm pleased with that. I'm a bit deeper in the water now, but I found a few bits and pieces. We've got some more stoneware. I won't take any more of those, but there's this circular thing here. What do you think that is? I'd say that's the top off a bottleneck. There's something here that looks very round. Ooh, something interesting. Oh, always lovely when we find something interesting. The only thing is, look at that. It's caked on with muck. Can't really scrape it off very well. I'd say possibly off an egg cup. If you want to see what it looks like cleaned up, then why not check out the live show 9 o'clock every Saturday evening where we clean up our finds, have a chat and a quiz, and a lot of fun. See you there. That I thought could have been a coin, but it's not. Oh, is that a coin? Now, I'm not building my hopes up. You know what stones are like in this area. Terrible for impersonating coins. It's a stone. <laughs> oh, well. Aha, uh -huh. what's this? It's 
definitely not natural, it's definitely man-made. It's metal. Not quite sure what it is. Do you think that's the front of a fireplace or some sort of oven, an old oven? I think it could be. That could be really interesting. That's big. Let's have a look. Oh, it's a piece of a bottom of a flagon. Oh, somebody's alive on there. I'll pop it back in the water. I hate seeing things like that. It makes me realise how vulnerable my poor little toes are. <laughs> Oh, look at these butterflies. I don't know if they're picking up on camera, but they're a beautiful, vibrant blue colour. Oops, they're gone. They're very flippy. Oh, they're not. They're like some sort of dragonfly. Look at the colour on that. Oh, I hope you can pick up this. He sat on the leaf. Oops, there he goes. What's that? I don't think it's anything nasty or gory. I think it's China. Oh, yes, it is. There's some lines on it, I think. Oh. It's a little creepy crawly on there, crawling up my finger. I think we'll leave that where it is. Now look at this one. A lot of this china and stoneware has been in this water for a very long time. Hello, Mr. Johnson, and what are you doing? Mankeys decided that you found so many lovely pieces of china on this river that he wants to set up a game of plain or patterned. Ooh, so let's play plain or patterned. Oh, right. Now I can remember some of these pieces, but I can't oh, remember oh, oh. if they were plain or patterned. She cheated, Maggie. Um, oh, plain. Oh, he was patterned. Mm, it's an embossed Look pattern. Look at that. So. That's really pretty. I cleaned it off a bit in the yeah, river. It looks much better now you've clearer. washed it. There we go, so that's right. one dress. One to you. There we go, Mikey. Um, there. plain. Oh, no! A nice little bit of fencing. Look mm. at that, it's a little bit of fence off, probably a willow pattern plate. And dress. I didn't get it. Patterned. Oh, I'm doing really <laughs> badly. Plain. Um, patterned. Oh, yes, it's patterned. It's a bit of willow pattern again. There we are, to you. Up to me. And patterned. Oh, now I don't think I'd seen that. Was that piece I gave you? That was a piece that I may have picked up, but um, that's beautiful. I think it came from near where you found that pile. All oh, right. But when I washed it, then I saw the colour. Look at the colour. It is lovely. I think that may be a daffodil. Mm, cause Very was fitting for a Welsh mudlark. A lot of algae on these pieces, mm. weren't there? So you got that one right. And um, plain. Oh, yep, that's three plain. A piece. Ooh, we go for this one patterned. Oh mm, yes, that's, that's patterned. That's the one I found. You got four, three. Patterned. Oh, it's got a tiny little tiny line, line on. Oh, another one for us. Five, uh, three. Oh, patterned. Oh yes, it's patterned right. again. Mankey, I'm sorry to tell you, there's eleven pieces. We can't win, but we're playing just for the glory you now. Plain. Oh, no, it's pattern. Look at that. <laughs> we got four. And plain. <gasps> it's patterned. <laughs> oh, well done. So what were the figures? Well, we started well. Yes. We took the first three and we finished well. We took the last two. But due to the fact there were 11 pieces, that means you took the six in the middle. But we will give you at least a two piece advantage because i did pick up some of those pieces and even though i couldn't remember it must have been in my mind so it was oh. cheated an incy dincy bit well we'll call it a draw at six five okay then <laughs> and we and we enjoyed the game we did it was a lot of fun and before we do anything else look at this right next door to us we got a cob nut tree and look at that look how many nuts are just on that one cluster Ooh, tasty anyway what were you saying i was about to say there's going to be a link up here where you can watch more videos just like this one. Yep. If you've enjoyed this video, then give us a thumbs up. Doing, doing, doing. I've enjoyed it because I loved finding my bit of pipe bowl. Very nice. But now we're back where we started with Abby and we're going to have a nice cup of tea. So till the next time, have fun.
Bye. Bye.